Clive, he said, uh, evil is never abstract. It is always concrete and always particular and always vested in individuals. So to deny creatures as individuals the right to speak and to actually state their case is perverse because I want to hear the devil speak. I like the idea that a point of view can be made by the dark side. And I think that's really uh, important for Silent Hill because if you look at the other characters in Silent Hill and you look at the other stories, um, Silent Hill, we kind of cast it as like it's an evil entity. It's this evil town that's trying to destroy you. But actually, it's just a really extreme form of uh, psychology, right? Of like psychotherapy. It's trying to help its characters get through the guilt or the sin or whatever it is that they're carrying around. So uh, that's something that's really important to, to the team at Vatra, is we want to give Silent Hill a chance to kind of state its case uh, and let it either redeem or destroy Murphy Pendleton based on the player's actions. Um, we were running a bit late because of the previous uh, presentation and stuff, so uh, I just want to take like maybe five or ten minutes. If people have questions, go ahead and, and uh, ask me, and, and if I can answer it without getting killed by Konami, I will. The, what was my, um, what do I think is the scariest horror movie or the, or the best scariest horror game? Um, well, that's a really good question. Well, the, I mean, Silent Hill 2 did scare the hell out of me. Uh, the first Silent Hill scared me too. Um, you know, Bioshock actually scared me a lot. Um, even though it was kind of, again, it was kind of more of a, a science fiction. Just from that first moment, from the first moment when you went into uh, Rapture, and you came down the elevator, and then you remember the elevator got stuck, and there's a horrible little thing out there that's trying to burrow its way into the elevator and kill you. And it's one of those moments where you're absolutely at the the, uh, the mercy of the of the game designer. But you end up surviving that encounter. But like I remember the the first you know time I played that level, that even just that moment like shook me up. And from that point forward, as I explored the rest of Rapture, I was just afraid of those moments. The the uh, the game designers uh, on Bioshock basically made a covenant with you at that moment in the elevator. They said, there are going to be moments in this game where I'm going to really fuck with you. I'm going to lock you down, you're not going to be able to defend yourself, and bad things are going to happen to you. And from that moment on, I was constantly expecting it. And they did it. I mean, they did it with like the big daddies, which were like, you know, big walking tanks, and every time they entered the screen, uh, you know, I, I ran like hell. Uh, so I would say that in more recent memory, that's probably the most scariest game. The worst horror game, or just the worst game? Worst horror game. Oh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't like to sling mud. <laughs> um, you know, game des game design is a really uh, it's a very tough uh, science, um, and it takes a lot of people to make a game um, really successful, and it actually takes a lot of people to, to mess up a game too. Um, so I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll take one of my my own, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll throw mud at my own game. Um, I'd say Jericho was probably uh, my biggest disappointment in, in horror because it had so much potential. We had Clive Barker, uh, he gave us just absolute access to his brain. Uh, we worked with him for a year. Uh, this was my, my company, Alchemic. We worked with Clive for a whole year just getting the characters right, getting the story and the script and the world where we were happy with it before we ever found a developer because Alchemic was not the developer. Mercury Steam was doing the new uh, Castlevania game was the developer and Codemasters was our publisher. So we kind of had like all of our pieces together and we had all that we're doing with, with this Silent Hill now, I learned my lesson. Um, and then of course there were, there were other issues like uh, Codemasters, uh, I don't mind slinging mud at them. Um, they, uh, they didn't give us the budget that they promised us, they actually gave us about half the budget they promised. Um, people complain about Jericho saying that the ending was absolutely terrible. Well, it's not actually the ending of the game. They actually cut two levels off of the end of the game because they frankly ran out of money. Um, so that was sort of like my, my biggest disappointment. So I'd say that's like the worst that I've, that I've worked on. Um, it, as far as like the, the design of his monsters, I don't think we did. I don't think we did break them. Um, because, uh, like, well, for example, the, like the third degree, right? The third degree of the monster, the one that possesses you. Uh, the, the ultimate bad guy in Jericho was exactly that. It was a, a monster that was uh, possessing every person that came up to fight him. 
uh, then became the plaything of that monster. It was basically a childlike god that was turning people into uh, toys. And they were toys that couldn't ever kill themselves. There was no end in sight. It was eternal damnation, basically. Um, so uh, I, I, think, I think in that respect, we actually did follow Clive's um, rules. I mean, like our, our, our low-level bad guys, our cannon fodder, our cultists in Jericho, really did just try to kill you. They tried to dismem dismember you and kill you and rip you up. Uh, the second level, guys like, um, uh, you know, we had like guys that would, would burst things out of his uh, body surfaces, out of his membranes, as Clive said. Um, and those things could, uh, you know, cause like uh, splash damage on you. Um, we had a, uh, an enemy that ended up getting cut from the game that did possess you, um, that would take over a, a member and then turn him against the rest of the squad. So we, it was kind of in the blueprint to follow that. But unfortunately, there was other areas of the game that we, that we didn't pay that kind of attention. Um, yeah, Clive uh, and I have spoken about games. Um, it kind of depends on his schedule and my schedule. Um, we like working together. Um, he's, uh, he's been really busy trying to finish up his books. He's, he's done like a five-part um, children's series uh, called The, uh, the Aberat, um, which I know he's trying to finish up. He's really heavily involved in his painting. He's also a painter. Um, so I can't say much, <laughs> but I can say that you know, I've, I, I'm interested in, in working with him again, um, and I've kind of put those feelers out to him. Uh, whether or not he has the time or energy to do it, we'll see. But he won't be involved in Silent Hill 8. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, way in the back. What is your favorite uh, ending or special ending in Silent Hill 1, 2, or 3? Favorite special ending? <laughs> Um, I'm going to sound really weird here, but I think my favorite ending was uh, the dog ending. <laughs> I, I really liked the Shiba Inu. The image of the, uh, the Shiba Inu dog with the credits rolling over his face uh, had me laughing uh, quite a bit. It was a really absurd uh, ending to a really horrific game. And um, in fact, when I came to work for Vatra, when I first interviewed at Vatra, uh, one of the first members of the team that I met was Teasley which is the uh, studio director's Shibu Inu dog. Uh, and it looks exactly like the dog from that ending. So when I saw him, I was like, ah, this is fate. I, I, I'm at the right team. Um, really, this just comes down to playtesting. It's focus testing and playtesting. Um, you can get very close to a game working on it. Um, you, you know where all of the scares are coming from, where every enemy is coming from, and how to beat it perfectly every time. Um, and the only way to sort of account for that is, uh, is to bring in outsiders, bring in fresh playtesters, bring in focus groups, and watch them. Watch them carefully and, and interview them. Don't just watch the footage of them playing, but then interview them afterwards. Um, some of the best playtesting I've done on, on other games has been the ones where you have a camera actually mounted uh, on the monitor watching their face, and that's in, like done in picture in picture, so you can see what's happening on the screen, and then you can see what their face is, is what expression they have, and what they're saying uh, while they're playing the game. That's the kind of invaluable feedback uh, you can get, and that's that's exactly the kind that we're gonna we're gonna need to get for for balancing.
That's a very interesting question. Um, so uh, is, we're basically talking about Eastern horror versus Western horror. Um, well, first of all, the, the game is being made by Konami America, right? So that's who our publishers are. Uh, obviously, we have some contact with, with Konami Japan, but it's, the show is being run by Konami America. So you would think automatically that it's going to have a Western slant. Um, to some degree, maybe there is, in that, um, you know, I, 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 I guess it would be arrogant of me to say that um, there's no Western leanings in it. I mean, I, I'm a Westerner. I grew up in Los Angeles. Um, the Czech Republic, obviously, we're a Western country. So I, I, I think it would be arrogant to say that that's not going to have any influence on the game. I'm sure the game would be different if it was made by a Japanese developer with a Japanese publisher. Um, with that said, though, um, I think it's still... Japanese in flavor, let's say, in that um, by the end of the game, I, I don't think I'm giving any spoilers by saying you will still probably end the game with just as many questions as you had going into it. I don't think we're going to wrap up everything in a nice, neat package the way a, a typical Western uh, horror story would. Um, I think it's safe to say that the monster will not get killed by the hero at the end, and, and he lives on and has a happy ending. Um, not to say that there's not a happy ending for our game, but I'd say that the, you know, the kind of happy endings that you find in Silent Hill are not typically the happy endings that you find in uh, a typical you know, American horror film, let's say. Um, so, so I'd say, yeah, it's, it's undeniably going to have a Western slant because we are Western developers. But uh, we, are, we are trying to be as respectful as we possibly can to its roots with the Japanese games. All right, maybe time for one last one. Ah, to what happened to the company, Alchemic? Um, uh, it sort of exists on paper because it owns licenses <laughs> to stuff. So uh, legally it exists so that it can continue to make money off of things that it's created. But um, I'm, I am a, a Batra design director you know, full time. Right. Okay, well thank you very much guys. Sorry about the, uh, the, the time delay. Thanks a lot.